Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about shading and how the light effects works in IE3. So Build Engine has actually a shade value on each of the walls and the sprites and so on. But what the shade value actually is, is that it actually makes things darker. So if you observe on the bottom left, you have a shade value which is zero. This is the baseline. But if you add one, add two, add three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Notice it actually gets darker instead of lighter. You would assume that uh, it would be the brightness, but it's actually the opposite in Build Engine. So the shade is basically just an offset on uh, like how dark the wall should be. So 16, and you can see that it's lighter and darker in distance. So let's put it at back at zero, and this is the regular brightness. Uh, if I do the same thing on the sprite, you can notice that it goes darker and it goes lighter when I increase the shade but actually what's happening is that I'm just basically removing shade that was there in the first place um, technically what I'm doing here I when I go negative I keep adding and adding and adding um, it actually the negative value of shade at that point so it's, it becomes basically uh, brighter than bright so to say it's kind of silly how it works but um just think of it as a more more shade value the darker something gets so when something is higher that actually means that you have shaded it more instead of made it lighter um what the sprite does the light effects is that you can use that to total the shade of the sector uh to be brighter or darker it's it's very very simple so this is basically how the light effects in build engine get determined so for example, if I split the sector in two and I make the sector here darker, I'm going to copy paste this same shade value. You already see that it looks like there is some kind of light source somewhere. So this is basically how the shading in the build engine works as a very basic thing. Um, of course, to make this one lighter, um, you would need to, something to light it up manually, like dynamically, dynamically if you want to adjust the shade uh, during runtime, you need the sprite for it, right? Uh, this sprite, basically we're going to focus on getting the light on and off right now. So let's focus on getting the light on and off. All you need is a light switch and tack this sprite to something. So what you have is channels. In this case, we're going to have the channel or linking tag. We're going to use load tag. Let's give it a 10. And this is going to be the value you're going to use on pretty much everything. So here we're going to add a switch here. So here's our switch. There, I'm going to give it a load tag of 10. And from now on, this light switch is a thing that makes the thing turn on and off when uh, I have it there. Uh, one useful thing is that in the, the Fury editor, uh, this is something you can turn on and off is Control Shift X. And you can see on the top left, we have the light preview on. And if I turn it off, it goes away. So on, off. And every time you edit a map, um, since this is a destructive operation, every time you turn the light preview off, before you start editing anything else, always turn it off. So what do we do here? Okay, we want to make this sector brighter, right? So instead of adding the shade, you actually make it negative. So this way, uh, if you press, press plus, it actually adds the shade. So don't get discouraged when it says something like that. So. Let's see if we do the preview. You can see that it already gets lighter. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, almost there. You can see if I point at the floor, you can see that the value of the shade is 14. So in this case, to make it offset there, we need to actually put it minus 14. And there you go. Now it's exactly like it's supposed to be. So now we want a way to toggle this in game. So you have the Low tag 10 and you have the switch 10. So if you go in game, it takes a while for it to show up on the stream, the recording or whatever. But here I am in game, and once I press the switch, you can notice that it gets light, light and dark. You notice that it also has this kind of like transition uh, between the light and dark, is to kind of add the illusion of a light source kind of like flooding in. It's not really realistic. We all know light travels faster than that, but uh, kind of like what the old games did to give you the illusion of things going on on and off, and 
if you have like a let's say a lamp there then maybe it's not instantly like the brightest it can be or whatever so that's basically how it works on the light switch so now let's go to the attributes so number of steps the shade will adjust every cycle in this case a cycle is a second divided by 30. So you have 30 cycles in a second. This is how often the script runs in the game. You can imagine that it's like 30 FPS is, is like the 30 hertz, 30 FPS is what the um, scripting runs at. So 30 update cycles in a second. In a way, if we want, uh, let's say we have 15 or something, then that would be half of it. But let's let's just uh, give it a brief thing. So we want this to be instant, right? So in this case, we want the steps to adjust um, per cycle. We want to make it 14. So that's going to make it instant. Uh, so high tag, we're going to give it 14. And in this case, when, once we go in game, and by the way, before you ask, there is no fractions game. So push the button, you can see that it's instant. I'm just going to slow down the game a little bit. So here's like the game super slowed down. You can see that it's instant. It has like no transitional animation there. And that's basically how it goes. So if we put high tag back to zero, there is another value, which is force delay between cycles. And 30 ticks is one second exactly. So in this case, if I make a force delay between cycles, I add one tick. So now it takes about, I don't know, 14 ticks because it does like one unit every tick normally. So now we have uh, adjust shade and weight, adjust shade and weight. You can see that it's much slower than it was like the first time we did this. So if I slow this down, so make it a little bit easier to see, you can see that it's like adjusting the shade, all the 14 steps that are happening there. It's happening very, very, very slow. So there's a force delay between each cycle. If I do the XVEL, I'm going to make it five. Then uh, at this point, it's going to take like way over a second or should take way over a second to get things done. Let's see what happens. So this is regular speed. You can see that it's very slow when it comes to the shade adjusting. And of course, since we're playing in software mode, uh, the thing isn't kind of you're nearly not gonna get like the shade steps visible all the way because there's not enough colors to represent all the shade steps so you can see some of the squares getting lit up a little bit earlier than the others but that's simply the nature of the software rendering so that's how you make it very slow but of course since you ran out of shade steps you don't really want to do that so that is the very basic functionality of the trigger and then we have flags. If you adjust the Y well, we can skip ceiling. So let's see, we, we skip the ceiling and this way you can do light sources that are not gonna affect like absolutely everything. So let's say you want this one to be lit, but you don't want the ceiling to be lit because you have an object in the middle. So this way you can adjust the floor, but not the ceiling. So we do a skip because normally you want to adjust absolutely everything. If you do the light preview, you can see the it's only affecting the ceiling as well. The same thing here, if you want to skip walls, it is 4. So now the walls are staying black. If we want to do both, then you just add them together, and now we only get the floor that get, gets shaded. And in this, gets, in this instance, gets shaded brighter. And then there is a property to do like set PAL and services, even if a light PAL is zero. This means that uh, if you have, for example, a room that has like, uh, let's say you have red, 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 then um, normally it's, if you have like a non-PAL thing here, it only cares about the shade. It's not gonna adjust anything else except the shade. But if you, if you add the flag, it's not gonna preview it in the editor, but if you add the flag, then it will actually make the I'll go away, so I'll just show it quickly in game. So why well we're gonna do eight here. This is kind of an override because normally if you have no pal, then it's that you don't want to adjust the palette. But with this you can kind of 
force you to adjust the palette. So in this case, like the palette goes away. So that way you can have like a different kind of lights and sometimes you might wanna let alter the palette to something else. So then there's also a different value here. So if I add the, when turning off delay palette after shade change is finished, I'll just show it to you like what it does. This is basically what the lights, the circling lights do in the finale of the thing. It makes it a little bit smoother when the light goes off. So it kind of, it kind of changes the palettes after the shading is dark. So this way you can kind of, if you have like a light source thing, it kind of makes it a little bit more natural because um, of course the palette would just disappear uh, after, after you're done with the shading. So let me just make it a little bit easier to understand here. Palette nine. And you will see that it kind of looks a little bit more natural perhaps uh, in some scenarios. So the light goes on, light goes off. And in this case, the palette just disappears like say last thing. So it doesn't like, uh, uh, otherwise the problem is that it's gonna be very lit up. So I'll just do here and it, I don't need the velocity eight here anymore. But you will see that if I do this, we go, do this, it kind of looks silly because you have the, you still have it bright and then it goes dark. And I mean, if you have a red light source, it sh should not do that kind of thing. Dark already. Point. So that's that's how you can use that value. It's a little bit strange sounding. And change ceiling, shade even when parallax should be fairly simple. And uh, ignore high tack one, skip light effects setting on walls. And this is basically a holdover from Duke 3D where you have high tag on walls and you can decide, okay, I want to skip these these walls and only only do one. So if I now it's going to be the wall on the top, but you'll see that uh, it should skip the wall um, from being lit now that I push this button. Yeah, you'll see that it will skip this wall. So that way you can skip these specific walls um, without having to, because normally you would think that you have to do, A, I want to do this here, so I only have this wall, and then I'm going to this one here, and I'm not going to make it ignore all the walls except, and then have the duplicate here that's going to do that. So that's going to be like a waste of sectors. So we added the function that, uh, no, I tag the wall, and this way you can skip it if you need it. Uh, so this is the light effects, and the light effects basically has another function. I'm gonna just gonna remove the palettes from this to make it a little bit easier to visualize. I'm gonna remove all the tags and everything. I'm just gonna reduce the sh shade, uh, reduce everything to make it a little bit easier. So here we go, and this is like a stock light effects sprite. So it has another function. You would, I would basically call it like a monkey toggling a switch or something like that. So if you set the extra to be higher than zero, in this case, if I do 10, uh, it becomes a flicker controller. The text and nothing changes, but the guides on the, on the bottom, bottom left changes. So in this case, uh, flicker controller can always be on. And if I insert a low tag of 10, this is like the very basic functionality of the Flickr control. Let's see what happens. I have a 10 ticks and I have a type to the sprite. So you'll see what happens. So you'll see that it actually flickers. And in this case, this is the basic functionality of the Flickr. We don't touch the button, we don't do anything. And it, I can still do the, I can still adjust the button, but the Flickr controller will keep adjusting the sector. So I can turn, for example, the light on and whatever, like have thing, things there. So how the flicker controller works is that it actually has randomization. So you can set the randomization to be one. And so now it removes the randomization from the flicker. The documentation is a little bit annoying, but it's it's kind of kind of like whatever. Uh, it has the property if, if you trigger the light will be set back to its starting state. Uh, so you can kind of trigger this flicker controller on and off and start it in on, set, on state. So you can have it, uh, if, it, if you don't have it like permanently on, you can have it on state instead of like having to turn it on. And then you have the option to send like a real trigger instead of 
instead of just lights. So you can trigger like even explosions or something like that. If you really want to trigger like a sound uh, by random, then you can use this. So for example, if I add a sound sprite here, demonstrate I add a sound sprite. Maybe. Uh, let's see. It's music and FX plus. Let's have a look. We need music FX plus and a music FX plus. Okay, well, this way. And let's do bass sound. Let's do this. Sure. Uh, bass sound. Uh, just like low tag is and a high tag is 10 which is the sound and then to the flicker controller uh, we do the exact same but we're gonna have it eight so now we should be getting like the sound every time it flickers except we don't um, there's something to do with the scripting or something probably like the automation thing isn't uh, but the thing is supposed to work. Uh, for X or flag two. So, okay, well, it's um, anyway. This is supposed to work. Uh, I think the flicker effects needs to be on or something. Used to work before. Anyway, um, if I put a high tag, I put like let's say ten here, then. Um, now I need the low tag of the sprites to control. And now the low tag changed to flicker on and off trigger. So I put 11 here and I put 11 here. So now instead of uh, going there, it actually has like this chain going on with the dip switch actually controls the flicker and the flicker controls the light. All right, Let's see what happens. And now it works. So it basically is broken on the always on thing. That's what's going on. So the clicker controller is kind of like a monkey toggle thing. And now it's toggling the sound and it's toggling the lights. And I use this button to turn it on and off. So now it's turned off the flicker controller. And now it's on again. And that's kind of how it works. And in this case, um, if triggered, reset, light will reset back to its original state. So there, and this should kind of uh, force it to reset it to the original state. Kind of jitters a little bit, but now when I turn it off, it doesn't do it. But you get the idea what I try to do, say there. Um, then if you want to slow down a lot and you want to have these going on around and whatnot then the thing is that if you want to do like a pulsing thing so this gets a little bit more intricate so i'm just gonna have the flicker controller be on again um i'm just gonna remove the high tag to make it like permanently on uh i'm gonna keep the uh 11 there just to make it a little bit easy uh count between uh flickers in ticks i'm gonna keep it 10 for now uh i'm gonna remove all the flags except the randomization because I want it to be like dun, 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 every 10 ticks. So now if I start the map, let's see, I forget something. Start in an odd state. I'll just I'll drive just in case. It's probably is that I changed something. And let's see if it works. Uh, oh yeah, I have low tag ten. Low tag of yeah, that uh, should be good. Nope. There we go. Yep. There we go. Good. Nice tag there. So now when we go in-game, you will see that every 10 ticks it's doing this. 
it looks pretty atrocious with the uh, palette swap. So let's remove the palette swap to make it a little bit better. Let's see what's going on. So now you can see that it looks like it's pulsing. So this is basically every 10 ticks, it's kind of like toggling it on and off. So in this case, you see kind of like a pulsating effect that you can create with it. Kind of like a cycler effect create with the light FX sprites. And in this case, it's unfortunately a little bit annoying because, uh, well, we can do the first delay between changes. So it becomes a little, little bit better. But if you want to toggle these like at a different order, then it kind of requires a little bit more work because uh, you have to kind of toggle these in an order. So it is a little bit annoying uh, to create like a cycling thing. So how I would do it is a you activate the flicker controller. So in this case, I'm going to, let's say, give it 100. And this is 11. I'm just going to low tab, linking tab, switch flicker. Low tag, light FX bright, no, that's 10. And uh, linking tag to switch on and off. I'm just going to do 100. And uh, then these guys, I'm going to give 10. 10. And let's see, I need a something that's going to kind of like a little bit do a little bit more crawling kind of movement. So let's ditch the, our old trusty sector there. I'm going to split this apart. So now I have these sectors, and what we need to do is that we need to basically increase the high tag and low tag of these. So I'm just going to take these, I'm going to clone them here, here, clone them, and clone them here. So what we can do is that I can give the uh, low tag, I will, I will add one, one to each. This one you don't need to touch. So in this case, low tag increased by, um, increase the low tag by one. There we go. And I'm gonna increase by, well, this one 13 and this one 14. So we have zero, one, two, three, four. That's a nice sequence. And then we need to make the same thing here. So we, we're gonna give the low tag 101, high tag one, because we're controlling that sprite, then uh, 12 and 102, 3, 1, 3, 13, 4, and 14. You can do it however you want, but this makes it a little bit easier to operate this. Then we create a single touch plate plus that activates these. So let's go in here. I'm gonna figure out the touch plate plus there. And when this gets triggered, um, it will do this and it will do four additional ones. So in this case, it's going to do 100, 101, 102, 103, 104. And it's going to activate them all at the same time. But we can first confirm that this works. So I'm just going to make the, just going to make the sector a bit darker. So just there, 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 there. See, a little bit easier response. Now let's go in game and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Flicker controller. Oh yeah, because I have the start in on state. So let's do the remove randomization from there, and let's try again. Because I basically just triggered them off when I started the map, I think. Yeah, there we go. You can see the pulsating lights. I'm just going to add, uh, remove the force delay between cycles. So we're going to make that zero. So this way, we'll get a slightly larger cycle for the pulse. Okay, there we go. That's a good pulse. Let's 
fairly uniform. It's like you can see that it's already like slightly cycling. This is because the touch blade plus inherently like has a one tick delay on everything. So you can already see in the slowdown that there's like a very, very tiny like this wave movement. Let's add a little bit of delay. So I'm gonna add five. So this is gonna add five ticks of delay between each trigger. We already have kind of like reversing poles here. We can uh, reduce this to one tick. So maybe this is because we have a pretty, pretty like a quick, uh, we only have 10 ticks of room for the whole thing to do its sequence because, yep, there we go. That looks much better already. You can kind of see that we created this like trailing, trailing thing with the light effects. Uh, since the texture is different on those, uh, it will actually not look the exact same. So I'll just do this. It's probably not going to look that good. Maybe this will work and make it look visually similar to how it would look. So this should give you a better idea of what the ramp will look like. There we go. That looks a much more uniform one. You can kind of see reverse because the blue kind of pulls with your eye. So here we can do, we can increase the cycle. So count between ticks, we can make this, let's say, we make this um, 30. Then you'll see that uh, we have a much more like room between the ticks and you'll kind of start to lose the illusion a little bit because well i guess you can do it kind of like cut the period off a little bit so here you can see the palette ramp is in the exact same with the blue as with the uh, other thing maybe we can remove the palettes here and i'll just do the relative adjustment so this way we 100 percent sure that the uh, palettes and everything will be matching between those. Then you already saw the thing, so now we can actually start adjusting the offset, the force delay between ticks. We can actually increase this to four, I think. And if you look in game, it should make the fade a little bit lazier. Yeah, there we go. So now we already have this kind of like slight version thing but it's it's a little bit different so experiment with these and you'll get your own solution for the thing but that's pretty much the light effects and the things you can do with the light effects and flicker controller um just remember that the flicker controller is essentially just a i like a toggler thing so once you add any kind of extra to the count between flickers and ticks um, you make it a flicker controller. So if I put this to zero, it becomes a light. If I put it back to 30, it becomes a flicker controller. So keep that in mind when working with the thing.